A lot of people have asked me to cover a DLSS mod for Starfield. So in this video, I'm going to show you which DLSS mod I would recommend and how you can install and set it up. But first of all, I want to talk about what DLSS brings to the table and what sort of results you might observe if you install one of the DLSS mods. So let's start by looking at the technology DLSS is going to replace, and that is the one currently used by Starfield, FSR2. This stands for Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2, and is basically AMD's answer to DLSS. But what does it actually do? Well, the first thing it does is it provides anti-aliasing that will get rid of that horrible jaggy effect you sometimes see or those kind of annoying edge shimmers. But it also allows the game to render at a lower resolution than the one you've set and then upscale to the resolution that you actually want. This will give you a frame rate boost, but at the cost of image quality. To show you what I mean, I want you to look at the front of my spaceship here. This is rendered at 1440p resolution and has no upscaling whatsoever. As you can see, everything is pretty clear. My frame rate is, if you give it a second to settle, about 103 frames per second, which is not bad at all, but it is not being assisted by the FSR2. If I go back to the settings menu, I will show you why. FSR2 is on, but I have the render resolution scale set at 100%. This means I am rendering at whatever the resolution is set here. If I drop that to 50%, the game will now render at a way smaller resolution and then upscale it using FSR2 to my monitor's resolution. If I go back and look now, give the frame rate counter a second, we now have 126 frames per second. So you can see we've got a bit of a boost. But you might also notice the image is not as high quality. This may be a little difficult to see on a YouTube video, but the aliasing problems have increased. Even though FSR2 comes with anti-aliasing, I can now see jaggies at the top of the ship and things like the text is a little blurred. It's, it's not very sharp. This is nowhere near as nice, even though I've got 20 frames a second more. If I go back and perhaps pick something a little less drastic, maybe 75%, I will get less of a frame rate boost but it's still noticeable, 117. In fact, I've really not lost that many frames per second in rendering at this resolution, but you will notice the image is nicer. It is nicer, and the aliasing problem has disappeared. So this seems to be a, a better middle ground for me. It's not quite as good quality as full resolution, but, you know, I do get the extra performance. But why would you use DLSS instead of FSR2 if you've got an NVIDIA card? Well, basically because it does all that, only better. Generally, it looks far superior to FSR2, and in some games, it will actually perform better. In this game, my experience has been, generally, if you're sticking to the standard DLSS2 mods, of which there are two, you're probably not going to get anything of a performance boost. At least I didn't. And I'm caveating it that way because, you know, results can vary. But I would say to you, you probably shouldn't expect much of a performance boost at the same resolution. However, it is noticeably better image. The, the image is much sharper. Again, it's going to be quite difficult to see on a YouTube video. But you'll have to trust me, in-game, it's a very noticeable difference. The, the letters on ships, foliage, all of those things are just way clearer than with FSR if you are changing your render resolution scale to below 100%. If you're leaving this at 100 because you don't need the frame boost, 
The image looks pretty much exactly the same, which is more or less what you would expect. Uh, they probably have slightly different ways of doing anti-aliasing, but that's about it. If you're keeping this at 100%, honestly, DLSS is not going to do much for you. If, however, you run it at, say, 75%, or you really crank it down to 50%, you will see the same frame rate boost as FSR2. It's, it's not better, at least it wasn't for me, but it will look a lot better. And this means you will be able to actually lower this slider and get more performance without it making your eyes want to disown you. Now, one of the mods I tested actually comes with frame generation, which is part of DLSS 3, and this can give a massive frame rate boost if you are using a 4000 series card. This will not work on anything other than a 4000 series card, but the frame rate boost was very noticeable. I'm talking 50% more frame rate even at 100% resolution scale. So for, from the frame rate perspective, this was worth using even if I didn't want to render at a lower resolution. The performance boost was noticeable. However, I couldn't see any evidence that there was anti-aliasing going on. The aliasing was really quite bad, a lot of jaggies and edge shimmer. So before I start using that, I'm going to have to investigate um, getting that fixed. There are lots of ways you can do that, and I'm going to be looking into it. And I may release another video aimed at people with the 4000 series card, if I can get that mod working well. As for the other two mods, the first is the Starfield Upscaler, and that was actually the first DLSS mod to come out for Starfield. And then there is the Starfield FSR2 Bridge mod, that is actually made by the same guy that made the frame generation mod as well. I found both mods produced pretty much the same result. I had very similar frame rates, the image looked almost identical. So for me, it came down to which was the easiest to deal with. And I found the Starfield FSR2 bridge just a tad easier to install and noticeably easier to set up exactly as I wanted to. So this is the mod I've chosen. However, if you prefer the Starfield Upscaler, that is also a good option. It does the job. Of course, the first thing you need to do is download the file, go along to the file section, FSR bridge dash DLSS, and download it to your mod manager. You're also going to need the DLSS DLL files. There's a link on the page. It will take you to Tech Powered Up. And on the left-hand side, we have all of the download files you are going to want to take NVIDIA DLSS DLL 3.5.0 or whatever the latest one here is, or you can also take the NVIDIA DLSS DLL 2.51 if you want to try that out. You, you can try different versions to see what works best for you. I found this one works just fine. And please do not mix up um, DLSS 3.5 with DLSS 3 and think you won't be able to use it on your card because you don't have a 4000 series. DLSS 3.5 is not the same as DLSS 3, which is also not the same as DLSS 2. They're not actually upgrades of each other. NVIDIA has the worst naming convention ever. Just don't panic. Take this file, try it out. If it doesn't work, you can try an earlier version. Once this file has downloaded, just drag it to where it says drop files if you're using Vortex or add it to your mod manager of choice. Then you need to install both of them to the game's root folder. If you're using Vortex, there's a very quick and easy way to do that. Right click and select unpack as is. For both of these mods, it will place that immediately in the game's root folder and you pretty much don't have to do anything else. And I didn't notice it auto-deploy, so I'm going to deploy mods just to make sure. And that is basically it. The DLSS mod is now actually installed. However, if you go in-game right now, you will probably notice that the image looks a little less sharp, especially when looking at trees and other foliage. This is because we've switched off FSR2 and we're no longer getting the sharpening that comes with it. To fix this, we're going to be using Reshade, 
We will not be installing this through the mod manager. We will be downloading it, first of all, from reshade.me. And you hit the download button and then scroll down and you should select the first of the download options, the one without full add-on support. Once the installer has downloaded, double click it to run and then select the game, obviously Starfield in this case. Now, if you are running Starfield on Steam, you will find it in this drop-down list. There, there you go, it's got starfield.exe. If, however, you're installing this on the Microsoft version, the Game Pass version, you are going to need to find it manually. I've got it installed on my Xbox Games Starfield content folder. You should probably know exactly where this is at this point, and you will need to select gamelauncher.exe. I'm going to install it here, so that's the one I'm going to choose. Then you click Next and select DirectX 10, 11 and 12. Now, if you have a preset in mind and have already downloaded it, you could use that here, but seeing as you would probably already have Reshade installed in that case, I'm going to assume you don't. I'm going to click Next, and now we have to pick the packages that contain the different effects we want. I found two that are of interest. One of them is in Sweet FX, that's the Luma sharpening, and the other is in Legacy Effects, the adaptive sharpening. I click Next, and now I want to select the, uh, the effects. You could have all of them if you want, but for this particular tutorial, I'm going to uncheck them all and only have the ones I want to make it a little easier to show you. You'll see why in a, in a second. I'm going to click Next there. I've selected Luma Sharpening, if you didn't catch that. I'm going to uncheck all here, and I'm going to select Adaptive Sharpening. Next, Finish, and it's basically done. You will know immediately if you've installed it correctly because you will get some text at the top prompting you to press Home to start a tutorial. So I'm going to do that quickly. I'm going to just hit Continue right now just to get through this. And here I have all the different effects I currently have selected. It's defaulting to Adaptive Sharpen at the moment. I want to deselect that until we get in-game. And I've chosen a spot with foliage because it's probably the easiest one to see the sharpening effect on. And I'm going to press Home again to open up the menu. And now I will select Adaptive Sharpen. You can probably already see the whole thing is massively better already. This is pretty much exactly the same as you get with the FSR2 sharpening effect. I believe it's actually almost identical. Uh, leave it about 70% and that is probably close to how it was. You can, of course, crank it all the way up to stupidly sharp, etc. And then once you're done, press escape and that's it. You're, you're pretty much set at that point. However, I would also suggest you maybe want to try playing around with Luma Sharpen. I kind of like this one, I must admit. I find this one to be a little more pleasant. I haven't quite found the setting I'm really happy about yet. Different places require different levels of sharpening, but compared to the Adaptive Sharpen, when I put the Adaptive Sharpen on, I find it gives it a slightly harsh edge. It sharpens the image, but it seems to sharpen edges more, so you, you get an almost, um, I don't know how to describe it, slightly cartoonish look occasionally with adaptive sharpening. I mean, it's not terrible, but I think the Luma sharpening just seems to be more subtle, and it can sharpen everything so you don't get those harsh edges. So, as you can see right now, it's very sharp indeed. I don't know if this is where I'm going to leave it, but it's very sharp indeed, and we don't have those harsh edges. So, you know, it's going to be completely up to you. And of course, don't forget that you need to set the render resolution scale to get the FPS improvement if you want. I'm currently at 105 frames per second, but that is at 100% resolution scale. And if you're going to leave that here, the DLSS mod is kind of pointless, in my opinion. It doesn't really add anything. So I'm going to drop it to, say, 75, and see what I get from that. What sort of frame rate boost? Okay. 
Let it settle. 118. Okay, so we've we've got we've got a 10 frames per second. Got about 10% frame rate boost. The image quality is still pretty good. And of course, I can always go into the reshade and increase the sharpening if I want to compensate a little. And basically the rest is up to you guys. You need to play around with these values and find what works for you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is actually it for the video. I hope I covered everything. I did try to cover all the relevant details, and I will be looking into the frame generation version of the mod and seeing if I can get that working and looking good on my 4000 series card. And if I do, I will make another video. Of course, you're more than welcome to join me on that video or indeed any of the other videos I'm going to be making about Starfield. But whichever video you decide to join me for, I look forward to seeing you there. And until then, remember as always, have fun. This is where we belong.